Today we are going to be reviewing the atom. And the first thing I want you to do is to write an essential question. And so our teak that we are going to be going over for this set of notes is that the student should be able to describe the structure of atoms, including the masses, electrical charges, and locations of protons and neutrons in the nucleus and electrons in the electron cloud. Now that you have the actual teak, go ahead and pause the video and write an essential question. What is the purpose of reviewing the atom? What are we looking to know? And how do you phrase that into a question? Okay. So we're going to go ahead and start reviewing atomic structure. So the first thing that I did is I went ahead and I made a model of an atom. And I just did a very simple Bohr model of an atom. And so go ahead and pause if you need to, to go ahead and draw that atom. And we are going to go ahead and slowly reveal what each piece of this atom actually is. So we're going to make a table to help us organize all of this information. So go ahead and label particle, mass, charge, and location on your table. And the very first particle that we are going to be talking about is going to be our proton. Our proton is going to be the thing that is in blue. It is in the center of our atom. It has a mass of one AMU. AMU stands for atomic mass unit. And it has a charge of plus one. And its location in the center is what is called the nucleus. The next particle that we are going to talk about is going to be the neutron. The neutron also has a mass of 1 AMU. However, it does not have a charge. But it is located with the proton, these gray dots in here, that is going to be our neutrons, and they are also in the nucleus. And the very last piece that we have to identify is going to be our electron. Our electron is unique in that it does not have a mass. Also, it is important to note that my drawing is extraordinarily out of scale. To make sure that it was easy enough to see the actual electrons on our orbital, I made them exceedingly large. This is not reflective of reality at all. It was exclusively so that you could see that I had written E's on this orbital. So my electron on the scale of atomic mass units does not have a mass, but it does have a charge. It is the exact opposite charge of our protons. Electrons have a charge of negative one. And they are located on the electron cloud. You could also say that they are located in orbitals, but we are specifically going to just say that they are in the electron cloud for right now. So I do have some important facts that we need to discuss, some misconceptions that people have about these uh, individual subatomic particles. And so we're going to first talk about our protons. Okay, so some proton facts that we have for you is that the number of protons determines what element an atom actually is. And since they are so fundamental to who the atom is, we call them the atomic number. So anytime that you hear uh, someone refer to an atomic number, that is the number of protons always, because the number of protons identifies the atom. It is the fundamental thing about that atom. The next uh, subatomic particle that we're gonna be clearing up some misconceptions and reiterating some facts about is going to be our neutrons. So neutrons, this 
is uh, a little shorthand for you. I forgot to mention it up here for protons. Protons, the shorthand is a P with a plus sign. This is uh, really to help you in remembering what a proton is fundamentally. And so we have a P, P for proton, and then we have a floating plus. That's to help you remember that protons have a charge of plus one. Neutrons, we follow the same format, but neutrons don't have a charge. So neutrons are going to go ahead and have a little uh, zero floating there. It's called the naught. Okay, so we have N naught, which means that neutrons with a zero charge. Okay, neutrons don't change who the atom is fundamentally. If I change the number of neutrons, it's still going to stay carbon if it has six or seven neutrons. That doesn't change. What it does change is the mass because neutrons have a mass and it is also going to affect stability. Neutrons specifically inside of the nucleus have the job of buffering the protons since as you've learned since elementary school, like charges repel and opposite charges attract the protons are repelling against each other inside of the nucleus and they need someone to buffer between so that those repel uh, those repelling forces don't force the atom to break apart so neutrons affect stability they do not change who i am fundamentally nor do they change the charge okay so the very last uh, subatomic particle that we need to talk about is going to be our electrons and so our electrons don't change the identity, just like with neutrons. Again, protons are gonna be the ones that they are our atomic number. They are the ones that are very, very important. Electrons just change the charge. They don't change the mass of the atom. Remember that uh, electrons have a mass of zero, so they cannot change the mass of the atom, but they can change the charge of that atom. The negative of the electron and the positive of the proton in the neutral atom balance out, meaning that I have the same number of protons as I do electrons so that my electrical charge is zero. If I start gaining electrons, then I will change my charge to a negative. And if I start losing electrons, I will change my charge to a positive. I know a lot of students get that mixed up because electrons do have a negative charge. So I specifically like to use the words steal or give away because those generally have uh, the similar connotations that we want you to have. So if an atom steals an electron or it gives away an electron, it will become something called an ion. Okay, so this is the effect of the electron count changing. So when an atom steals or loses electrons, it will become an ion, which is a charged atom. That's all an ion is, it's just a charged atom. And so we have, again, to note whether losing or gaining electrons is going to make the atom positive or negative. So we have something called a cat ion, and cat ions are pa, positively charged, okay? Cats have paws and cations are positively charged. The reason that cations are positively charged is because the atom lost electrons. It lost negative things or it gave away negative things. So it has a, an electrical charge that is positive because now we have more positives from our protons than we have negatives from our electrons. The next type of ion that we have is going to be our anion. Our anion is going to be the opposite of our cation. Our cation is positively charged, so our anion is going to be negatively charged. Cations are positively charged because I have more positives from protons than I have negatives from electrons. And anions are going to be negatively charged because I have more negative charges from my electrons than I do from my positive protons. The very last thing that we need to uh, go ahead and talk about today are going to be something called an isotope. 
So all of these types of ions were a direct result of my number of electrons. My isotopes are a direct result from my number of neutrons. Okay, so we're backtracking here. All the ions were a direct result of electrons. Isotopes are a direct result of my neutrons. So an isotope is going to be two or more forms of the same element. That means I'm going to have the same number of protons, but I'm going to have a different number of neutrons. This results in a differing mass of the actual atom. And since they are fundamentally still the same atom, carbon-12 and carbon-13 are both still carbon, but they weigh different amounts. So I have to identify them as something called an isotope to tell you, hey, these things weigh different amounts, but fundamentally they are the same thing.